So everyone, welcome to my session. This session is called Understanding Microsoft Dis Dataverse. So I'll be showing you a lot of interesting things in Microsoft Dataverse and now you can use Microsoft Dataverse to enrich your business. My name is Adiwali Yusuf. I'm a business intelligence analyst and also a trainer at Dbrand Consulting. I'm also a Microsoft certified trainer. I lead Nigeria Power Platform or your state user group. I'm also the moderator for the MCT West Africa Virtual Series, and I'm also a Microsoft Most Valuable Professional in Data Platform. You can connect with me on my social media handles on Twitter at Adewale Analyst, on LinkedIn, Adewale Yusuf, also on my YouTube channel. So I'll be introducing to you some agenda that we'll be working on today. One of the things we'll be talking about is introduction to Power Platform. How you can use Power Platform to actually build a business agile and business automations. I will also be talking about introductions to Microsoft Dataverse. For those that are new to Microsoft Dataverse, I'll be showing you a lot of great things you can do in Microsoft Dataverse, how you can set up um, your business rules, how you can set up your table, and how you can do a lot of interesting things in Microsoft Dataverse. I will also be talking about common data service. So Microsoft Dataverse is formally called common data service. So now there are some terminologies update and changes that Microsoft just made some couple of months ago. I'm going to introduce that to you as well so that if you are coming from the common data service side, you can also understand Microsoft Dataverse. Another thing that we also become talking about is why use Dataverse? Why do you need to use the Dataverse? A lot of people don't actually know how to answer that question because they don't know what they can use Dataverse for and why do you really need to use it? So I'll be talking about some interesting things and some important of uh, Dataverse and why you need to use it. Then I'll be showing you some demo to showcase how you can use Dataverse, how you can set up your table, how you can set up a lot of things in Dataverse, and also how you can use data flow with Dataverse. I think that's the most interesting thing that I love about uh, Dataverse. You can also use your data flow with Dataverse. For, for those that are familiar with data flow very well, so data flow is also called uh, Power Query for those that are familiar with Power BI, and it's also called Power Query in Excel. Right? So you can use data flow to connect to different data and bring them to your database. I'll also be talking about that. Now, talking about introductions to Microsoft Power Platform. So Microsoft Power Platform consists of four major Microsoft products, which are Power BI, Power Hubs, Power Automate, Power Virtual Agent. So all these interesting uh, products, they are low-code platform that spans through Office 365, Azure, Dynamics 365, and some standalone applications. So the, the, the interesting thing I love about these uh, four key Microsoft products is that they are very efficient for, for you, especially when you're trying to automate a lot of things in your business. Power BI is for business analytics for those um, that are new to Power BI. Power BI is for business analytics. You use it to get different insight on your data. Then we also have Power Apps, which is for application development. So you can develop a lot of applications with Power Apps. So just go in there, build an application with low code. You don't need to be a developer. Do you know that? You don't need to be a developer. Just be a low code user and start building an application. I can tell you that I am not a developer and I've built a lot of applications with Power Apps. We also have Power Automate. I love Power Automate. Power Automate is extremely interesting as well because you can automate a lot of things. Just imagine that you normally get your data from IT every month. You know in some organization, IT don't actually like giving uh, staff access to a data directly. So they prefer that you request for that data from them and they send it to you via email. Just imagine that you are able to connect your Power Automate to your Outlook so that when your IT send an attachment to you that consists of any data that you prefer, then Power Automate will pick that data from your Outlook, drop it in your OneDrive, then Power BI will pick it from your OneDrive and your report will, will be updated. So just imagine the stress of you going to Outlook download attachment, all that stress is gone. So Power Automate is for process automation, automate a lot of things. We also have Power Virtual Agent, which is for uh, intelligent virtual agent, and you can use it to be a bot, right? A lot of people go to website, you see chat here, chat us. So all those chat here, chat us, you can build your own bot that simply responds to people's questions without your presence. And then all that, you can build it with low code. You don't need to be a developer. 
So you can connect to all these four interesting apps with data connector, different database. If you're using SQL, you're using Excel, you're using, you can connect to different over 300 plus Bluebit connectors. There's also AI Builder that allows you to do a lot of artificial intelligence on these uh, four different uh, products. Now, the last one is called Dataverse. So Dataverse actually anchor all of these four interesting power platforms together. And it's like, uh, let me say, I can uh, simply call it uh, a database, right? Like a database that all these four products use and it's efficient. Now, going to the next slide, why do you, use to, why do you need to use a Dataverse? Why do you need to use a Dataverse? Now, let me tell you why. The reason why you need to use a Dataverse is simple. One of them is that Dataverse is easy to manage. You can manage it very efficiently. It's, it's very simple to manage, right? Easy to secure. Yeah, I also love that because you can easily secure your Dataverse. A lot of people don't know that you can secure your Dataverse very simple, right? Just Dataverse is secure because you store that user can see it and you can grab them access that this is what I want you to have access to. You can also uh, do a role-based security to allow you to control access to tables for different users within your organization. Another interesting thing about Dataverse is that you can access your Dynamic 365 data. So data from your Dynamic 365 application is also stored within Dataverse, allowing you to quickly build app that use your Dynamic 365 data and extend your apps with Power Apps, right? That's another interesting thing about um, Microsoft Dataverse. Now, rich metadata. So data types and relationships are used directly within Power because it has a rich meta metadata. Now, logic and validation as well. So you can define calculated columns, business rules, workflow, and business process flow to ensure that data quality and uh, uh, drive business uh, processes, right? That is logic and validation, and that's what I love about uh, Dataverse also. Then there's also productivity tools, right? Tables are available within the add-ins for Microsoft Excel to increase productivity and ensure data accessibility, right? That's productivity too. And those are the most interesting things why you need to use a Dataverse. Those are part of the things why you need to use a Microsoft Dataverse. Now, common data service terminologies update. Remember I told you that the Microsoft Dataverse is formally called Common Data Services. And because of the recent update from Microsoft, there are some terminologies, updates, and review. So I'll be giving you all these updates and those review. Now, the legacy term before is called Common Data Service. Now, it's called Microsoft Dataverse, which we're actually talking about. Tables before are called entity and entities. Now, you see the current time is table, tables. We also have field, which is now called column. We also have fields, which is now called columns. We have attribute before and also attribute. We also have record, right, which is now called row. And we have records, which is now called rows. So before, in a common data service, which is a legacy term, we have option set, we have multi-select option set, we have pick list, and we have pick list. But now, basically, they are now categorized into two, which is choice and choices. So before, you have two options, but now we simply have just yes or no. So those are the terminologies updates about common data service, and now it's transit into Microsoft Dataverse. Now, you need to put your data to work with the common data service. And then, one of the reasons why you need to do that is because it has some out of box data store for your app, advanced security, business logic and rules. You can just start up with a common data service model, Dynamic 365, Office 365, Azure data is available as well. So you need to start putting your data into common data service, right? Because it's give you a lot of those security and the likes. Now the overview of common data service. Don't mind me if I'm saying common data service, just know that common data service also means uh, Microsoft Dataverse. So common data service, a database storing a set of standard and custom data structured called entities, which is now called table, right? That is what a Microsoft Dataverse is. It's just a database that is storing a set of standard and custom data structured called tables, right? Then we also have something called common data model. So common data model is simply a set of open source standardized extensible data entities and relationship. And that's part of the open data initiative, right? So it's a cloud-based solution that easily structures a variety of data and business logic. 
to support interconnected applications and processes, and also to secure and complete um, in, in a well manner with, with a lot of security. Now, you need to identify tables and also columns in the common data service. So, you know, you need to identify what is a table, what is a column, right? And we have different type of tables, or let me call them entities, right? I can also call them entities. Some of the type of entities are standard. Standard is basically the base set of entities that are curated for every instance of a common data service database. So you can add more fields to any entity, but you can only delete field from a custom entity. You can't delete a field from a standard entity. Another type of entity that we have is called custom, custom entities, right? Or let me call them custom tables. It's the same thing. So they are created for a specific business applications, right? Uh, all licensed users of common data service can access custom entities, right? They can access it if they are assigned uh, proper security permission to do so. Another one that we have is complex entities that contain complex server side business logic, including real time workflow or plugins. Right? So those are the type of entities that we have. Then we have field as well. Field store discrete pieces of information within a record in an entity. It's sim uh, uh, similarly, or let me just say simply called uh, column. So every field has a type, which define the way they, they store the data. Example, there can be a date field, like a data type. There can be a number. There can be a decimal number. There can be a test. There can be uh, a choice. Right? So that is what basically uh, define what a column is or what a field is. Now, let me transit into my demo. And let's talk about how I can interestingly show you some great stuff in common data service. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to go to my Power Apps and I'll show you how you can actually set up a table with a common data service even in Power Apps, right? Now, look at my screen. So this is a uh, power hubs that I'm showing on my screen. On power hubs, I can jump to start creating an app from here. But since my demo is not about application, so what I want to do basically is just um, to um, some sort of uh, set up a common data service. Now, here in my power hubs, you will see data, right? You will see data in my power hubs. But I think I need to zoom down a little bit. Let me zoom that a little bit so that you can see it. So now, this is data here. And here, you can see tables. You can see tables, OK? You can see tables here, OK? Let me still look for zoom it so that I can zoom my screen. So this is Power Apps interface that you can see here. And this Power Apps interface, basically, I can go to data. From data, I will see tables here. I will see tables. Tables is, is to this side here. So everything basically under that data is um, is um, Microsoft Dataverse. Everything under that data is Microsoft Dataverse, right? So if I click on tables, tables, if I click on tables, now remember I, I said something about um, standard um, entities and um, custom entities. So these are some standard entities that I have in this database. I have account, you can see standard, I have address standard, appointment standard, and you can see that this approval is actually a custom, um, is a custom entity that was created by, by, by me. So I have some all other entities here, you can see them here. So these are different tables I have in my database. So another thing I can do is that maybe I want to create something like um, you know, another structure of table. So I can do that by just clicking on this new table at the top here. So look at this new table, new table. So I can create a structure table myself by just coming here and just do new table. Then you will see new table here. Once you see new table here, this will basically show my table name, where I want to put my table name, that's display name. And I can easily put something here and I will just say uh, demo, demo, let me see, demo 20. 
memo 20. Then under here, I have a display name. So display name basically is, is a primary column, which would be like a unique col unique uh, for each record in, in that table. So I can basically call this display name key. I can rename it as key. So this would be uh, like an auto number. So because it will be generated automatically. So I will make it in a way that it will be generated automatically. So that will be a key. Then also I can also enable attachment for this. I can enable attachment. So this basically is that when you want to create a structure of table that people can actually attach the files. They can attach PDF, Word, file. So I will just enable the attachment. And once I do that, I will click on create. Even before I click on create, there are some other things here that I can actually set. There's description, there's table type. Is it a standard table? Is it an activity table? Is user or owner? I can set some kind of security here. Is it user or team? Is it for the organization? So I can do a lot of things here, even offline, enable for mobile offline. So I can do a lot of settings here as well. So let me click on create. And it's going to show this um, notification here, just trying to tell me that I've enabled attachment for this table, and I can I can uh, revert this. So I'll click OK. Okay. So once I click OK, so now what you're looking at is the key, which is the primary column. Although my table is still provisioning, uh, you can see provisioning your your table in the background you may continue making changes you can see that here so i can start making any changes so i can wait for my table to finish provisioning and i can see all the default columns that actually come with this i can also call them field all the default fields that actually come with this but before i even wait for the table to finish provisioning i can actually make this an auto number data type so that it will generate this key for me automatically so look at data type you see test here this is the data type showing test right now but what i want is not test so i'll come down here and change it to auto number so this auto number simply means that it will generate an auto number right but presently what i have here is just a string prefix number which means it will generate a number for a minimum of four digits and it will be seed value of 1000 so I can change it to um, at least maybe date, date prefix number so that it will actually show the date and also the number. So I think I like this date prefix octo number for my key. So I'll click done for that. Now my table, your demo, your table demo 20 has been provisioned successfully. So now you can see some standard columns here that actually come with this and it's different from custom uh, entities, right? Custom column. So you see my custom columns here. So that is the key that I created myself. But did this created by, created on, they are all standard um, columns that come with my table. But in order to concentrate on my custom column, I can actually come to this view to the right here here then i will change this default to custom right so to show only the the columns that i created myself so now this key now what are the columns i want to start adding to my table so this table i would like to add a column called first name maybe first name uh, this is the name and it's going to be a test is it required or not i can make it required i say so this is required they must feel something then done so the next thing I need to add to this column is last name. So I'll come here and say last name. And then I'll also make this um, um, test. This is also a test. Then I'll make it required. Right? Now I click done. So another thing I can do and add to this my column, I can say um, address. Address. So I'll click on address. I'll make it required. Required. Then I will also click done. Right? So I can so that is the uh, address column so another thing i may need to add to this let me add another column to it so i may add a column called um, so i've asked for the address let me say okay country so i want to add a country column country so i want to know the country where you are from so if i check data type um in order to not allow my audience to start typing one by one i can actually use something called choice right so if i come here and i pick choice and uh, choice will load some choices i have some standard choice as well just like the way you have standard columns and standard entities you also have some standard choice i can also create some custom choices yourself so if i click on under choice these are the standard choice i'm talking about i have a yes or no boolean i have an activity audience so let me see if there's any standard um choice called country so if i can pick from that 
okay contract type country or region can you see that country or region so i can pick this right as a choice so i'll just make this required also you must pick this then i will save you can also do something like no default value so look at this telling me now which default value do you want to pick right do you want it to show a particular country or you want it to make it show no default value right but because the people that will be filling this form is actually from most of them are from uh, well okay let me make it no default value so people can actually pick the country that they like then done so the next thing i need to add to this is um i'm also going to add a column called um let's say salary so if i come here and i type um salary uh you know that salary is not going to be a test and it's not going to be a choice so then salary is definitely going to be a decimal number so i'll come here i'll pick a decimal number as my data type so i'll pick decimal number once i pick decimal number i'll also make this required you must fill this then i can say done right so the next one i can add another column so this next column that i'm adding is uh, let me say uh, date so the date basically is not going to be a test also it's also going not, not going to be a number this is definitely going to be a date so there's a date data type i even have a language i have uh, currency i have a customer i have file okay so let me add a date then uh, i'll make this date also required then i'll click done so now let me add something also called um, um, uh, let me say file upload although there's attachment automatically because i've enabled attachment but i can also add a column called file upload that everybody can upload their file so that is why i have a file as a data type here you can see file here file here so i'll put file here then i'll click done so this is all the different columns i was able to create inside this table so once i'm done with this table what i'll just do is to click save table so i'm saving this table right now i'm saving this table you can see saving the table so it's saving my table interesting so my table is saved now you can see that i have different tabs here i have relationship i have business rules i have views forms dashboard chart keys and data now look at relationship so relationship simply means that you are actually creating a relationship between two tables so i'm creating a relationship between uh, a table and also this particular one right so let me show you for example if i click on add relationship i have three type of relationship i have many to one relationship i have um, uh, one to many relationship and also many to many relationship so many to one relationship simply means that you are connecting uh, a table that has a many to a table that has just one unique um, value so we also have one to many and also many to many so if i pick one of them for example many to one so i can select a a a, a table that i want to create a many to one relationship from you can see that this my current table is demo 20 which is the current table that i have here and it has a many that's why you can see this star to one so which table do i want to connect one to so i can look for that table here okay let me look for one table and let's say and uh, do i have any table that has a key just to show a demo let me see let me see let me look for one okay so let me pick this state list now this state list i can actually use uh, this state just to connect to my uh, country so and i have lookup column display is new state list right and the column i'm using inside this table is state list 3 right so that's the table column i'm using as a lookup right so i'll just click done so i've created a lookup list of many to one in a relationship you can see this relationship here new state list relationship a many to one relationship right you can see a many to one relationship right you can see that so that's the relationship you can also create a relationship in your common data service there's also a business rule i think i love this as well so business rule is basically you creating like a condition inside your database so it conditions like okay so let's say uh, once a data come in and uh, and uh, if let me use if so if this data is equals is more than 100 million so let's say our salary is more than 100 million dollars if the salary is more than 100,000 dollars then i want this to able to be able to do this 
right? So you can create a business rules like that, and that will basically follow those rules. So there's also view, which I can use. There's also form. I like this form as well. You can use this form in your portal, portal app. You can easily build a form and create a form that, 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 that will just, um, so that you can send this to your audience and everything will just make sense. In fact, let me show you how form work. If I go to add form, there are different type of form. I have main form, I have quick view form, and I have card form. So for main form, let me click on main form. Uh, there are pending changes to this table that have not been saved. In order to open the form editor, you must save or discard all pending changes. Oh, let me save my table first. Oh, thank you for that. So I need to save my table. Always save your work. Always save. So I've saved my table. My table is saving. So interesting. So I've saved my work. Now let me create a main a main form for this this particular um, uh, this particular um, common data service. Let me create a main form for it. Now I've clicked on main form to create a form for this particular table. You can use this form in your dynamic 365 or you can even use it in your portal. Okay, so this is a form. You can use, see this form. You can see this form. You can see the forms loading my main form right now. Okay, so look at this. So this is like showing my attachment and showing my, so this general, I can just hide this general and create another form. So down here, these are the things that I have here already. I've hidden the general. You can see the general, you can actually delete this. So you can't, it's a default. So you can't delete this um, general um, tab. So I can just say, okay, let me hide this tab. Then I'll come down here to my component. So there's something called component in form, right? So component has, two things it has tab and also has section so you can add a section to a tab and you can add a tab to a form so let me add a, a let's say a two column tab for example you can see this two column tab here you can see a new section you can see another section then i will need this my tab i will just name it um questionnaire questionnaire so and you can see the name in here questionnaire so this new session one I can push something in here. So I already have a session here. So if I go to this ABC. Okay, so now I have these two sections. So I can pick any of my field and drop it in the section. So let's say, for example, I want to drop my first name. I will just click on it. My first name will come here. I want to pick my, uh, let's say, uh, this is just one tab actually. So this second session, I may even put something inside this second session. Maybe just file upload. Uh, yeah, that's file upload. Then this is my tab. I can change it to maybe let's say two tab, but um, let me leave that for now. Uh, I can change the, the the new section. I can change it to let me just say section one, right? Section one, right? That's the name. Then this one I can add my last name to it. And after adding my last name, I can add the date. I can add salary. I can add uh, address. Okay, I, I think I should I should just um, remove salary, uh, remove feed. Uh, let me remove this one, this particular feed. Oh, I can't delete this. Okay, so let me just um, let me add address and then country so i've added all of them to this i've created a form actually a form then i put a file here let me even put created by and created on here as well so this is a form that i can actually save and publish i can save this form and publish so this is the questionnaire so let me save this And let me publish this so I'm publishing my form so I've created a form that can be used in uh, in, in some places as well I can use this in portal right now in fact I can create a, an app and add this form to my portal so that is a form and my form is loading Yeah, so this is my form. So right now, my form is fine. I can switch this to classic or can do form setting. But let me go back to my common data service just to show you 
just to continue from where I stop inside my table. Okay, click on data. Remember to click on data, then I'll click on tables. Then what did I name my table? Remember I named my table demo 20. So I'll look for demo 20. Yep, so this is my table. Okay, so this is my table. I've showed you form. You can create different forms. And you can see the forms I created. It's called main form here. You can see it here, right? That's the form that I created. There's also dashboard. We, I can actually create a dashboard. There's also charts, there's keys, and there's data. So data basically will show you all the record inside your data. But right now, there's no record inside this data. That's why you can see no record, right? But I can actually create a record, but uh, I don't need to do that. I'll just click add record to just add a record to this, to this data right now. Yep, so I can create a lot of automations like that. So these are my tables and everything. So another thing I can do here, right? I can decide to delete this my table or edit this data in Excel. Look at this. I can decide to edit this data in Excel. So let's assume that I want to edit this now. Let me click on edit data in Excel. Now you see that this table would download something for me. You can see that your table has been successfully opened in Excel. Please check your download. See, let me open this in Excel. So look at this. So this is my data and it has successfully opened in Excel. So I can say enable editing. Enable editing. So immediately I click on enable editing. You will notice that something is loading right here. Something is loading right here. Just hold on for it. Let's look at how common data service is going to load here. Interesting. So look at this. So look at this. So this is called a. This is new in Excel actually. So this is called a data connector for for CDS, right? That allows you to be able to edit your data right there from Excel. So you can edit the data right there from Excel. So you can see the source. The source is demo 20, and the field is actually key. The field I'm clicking on right now is key, and the field I'm clicking on right now is. Uh, address right I can decide to create a new or I can decide to just create a new record for the selected data source I can refresh I can publish I can filter so let me create a new for example now let's say I want to create um, uh, something like let me just put a, a I'm thinking of a demo feed right now so let's say address is um, I want to create a demo feed I think my Excel is still loading Okay, so let me create something of address. Just say um, Nigeria, Nigeria. Then um, this is this, but for my key, uh, it's actually auto number, so I won't do anything. So this is the field I need to type. So this is a list, right? Remember, this is a list from um, a CDS that I created, like a drop down. So uh, we also pick or look for NGN here. So that's for Nigeria. Yeah, ng. So this is it. Then date, date. I can pick a date here. Look at this. I'm operating my common data service from Excel. So I can pick a date of, uh, let's say, uh, uh, today's date. Let's say today's date. Then first name is going to be something I need to type. So Adiwale. And then the last name is uh, Yusuf. And uh, I want to look up. I don't need all these actually. So they are all, these are all lookup table right and they are all uh, created automatically so modify back rated on all these are created so these are the standard columns i told you about but for my uh, custom column i think i've created that, that already so i can put another one here my address is ghana 
Ghana, or let me just put Accra, Ghana, Accra, Ghana, and then the country is GH, so I can look for GH, that's for Ghana. GH, yes, that's for Ghana, the date, I'll pick a date here, pick tomorrow, and the date is, I uh, can just pick uh, David, and I'll pick, I'll just type brown here, and then that's a new record, so let's assume I want to create another record, I'll click on new, it will go down, and we also, I'll be able to create anything I want to create here, I'll, UK, and here, I'll just pick any country here, maybe DE, pick a date here, here, and also type something here, David, and this is Abu, and that is it. So that is it. But I didn't put I didn't put anything in salary. So sorry. So my salary is important. So this is 40, this is 50, and this is like 60. Okay. So that is it. So salary, all other columns. I am not sure I need them. They, they, they are just standard columns, right? Those are standard columns. Standard columns. Okay, so once I'm done with this, once I'm done with this, I will just do Ctrl S, refresh this data, uh, confirm refresh. There are changes in the workbook that will be overwritten by this refresh. Uh, no, so let me stop refreshing. So now I've opened this here. So let me see if I go to my. So once I'm done with all these records that I've done, I will just click on publish just to publish all this data to, to the web. So I'm publishing this to my, uh, you can see publish workbook uh, updated. So you can see publish successful workbook updated. And you can see that uh, even this key has updated. So if I go to my common data service right now online and I go to data, so this data and I refresh, I click on refresh data. You can see there is now a record. So we're presently showing just key and created on. So I can change this view here that you can see. Look at this view you can see here. This view you can see here. I will just change it to custom columns. Yeah, let me just change it to custom columns so that I can see all my custom columns. Key, address, country, date, file updated, uh, first name, and last name. You notice that I didn't do anything to file updated. That's why you can't see anything there. So do I have my file updated here? File updated. File updated. I'm still looking for that. Yep. So my file updated is not here. So that's just it. Ah, that's the way you to edit your data in excel right and i have it edited in excel already now let's go back to my common data service so in this my common data service another thing i can i, I want to, want to show you guys is that you can connect data flow with um, microsoft dataverse so i can get the data using power query and then i can clean that data and just bring it here instead of creating a structured table like i did so you know i created a structured table from scratch i can actually pull a data from any database, maybe SharePoint, maybe Excel, maybe SQL, maybe Oracle, and I'll just bring it into my database, into my Microsoft Dataverse without creating it from scratch. So look at data. If I click on data, there's get data here, right? Look at this. So I, I can click on get data. Immediately I click on get data, you can see that Power Query has opened. So for those that are new to uh, data flow, so data flow is actually the same thing as Power Query you have in Power BI and Power Query you have in uh, uh, Excel, right? So this is called data flow. And then with this data flow, I can easily connect to any data I feel like I want to connect to. So let's say I want to connect to Excel data from my OneDrive. So I'll just click on it, Excel, then it will tell me to bring a file path here or URL. I should browse my OneDrive. So let me click browse OneDrive. Now it's showing my OneDrive, so I can now look for any file that I want to pick. Uh, so let's say, for example, I want um, uh, something like um, let me think of a date to bring, of a data to bring. Uh, okay, so temperature demo. So let me pick this temperature demo, temperature demo, and then 
I'll just click open temperature demo then open then you can see that this connection is showing my uh, OneDrive connection right now if your connection is not correct you can easily click on edit connections and you change your connections so I'll click next Yep. So once I click next, you see that this has loaded something called Power Query for me. For those that are used to Power Query, you see that this is exactly like how your Power Query is. I have sheet, I have uh, temperature, and this is the data that I want to load. This this temperature data that just have only date and temperature. So I will just click on it and say transform, or transform this data. Okay, so this data is loaded here. The date, I can change this to maybe date and time. So just change this data type to date and time. Then I have this as, uh, let me just put uh, O number for this. O number for this, my temperature. Yep, and everything is fine. Okay, so since I've detected this, so the next thing for me to do is just to click, I've, I've cleaned my data and everything fine here. So the next thing is just to just click next. So next to actually go to uh, where I can now actually determine whether I want to load this data to an existing table. I want to load it as a new table, but actually I would like to load it as a new table, right? I'm not adding it to any existing table. So I'm loading this data as a new table. So look at this, I have three options here. I have um, load to a new table, load to an existing table, then do not load. So what I want is to a new table, right? So, and I'm going to create a key for it, a key also. So a key column, which will be auto-generated, auto-generated, and I have two column here, which is date and temperature. So I'll click next. Okay, the temperature is reserve column name for table C out 30 temperature. Uh, okay, so this is telling me that there is, there is a table already. There is a table already in, in any of the column that I created that is reserved for that. So let me see if I can change the name of this temperature column and just put underscore in front of it. And let's see if that will work. Okay, so now I have underscore, so let me click next now. Uh, the temperature is the reserve um, column name for table CR30 temperature. Okay, so let me see. Okay, so basically, I think I need to change my uh, table display name, right? So because the display name must not be the same with the one at the top. So I can easily just change this. You can see immediately I put an underscore in front of it. It just worked for my display name. Then my table name and my display name will not be the same, right? So I'll click next now. And I think, I think it should work now. So interesting, so my table has loaded. And another interesting thing I like about this flow is that you can actually decide to refresh this manually, or you can say you want to refresh automatically by setting a date. I want to refresh every minute. I want to start from this particular date, maybe one minute every, every uh, hour, day, week, month. So you can set your refresh, right? But for me, I just want to refresh manually. So I'll just click on create. So once I click on create, you can see this is loading this data to my Microsoft Dataverse already. It's loading it to my Microsoft Dataverse already. 
right so another interesting thing i can do with the microsoft dataverse is that i can connect the data from my microsoft dataverse to power bi to actually generate some insight on my power bi on power bi all right to generate some insight on power bi to generate some insight on power bi right i can do that so it has loaded my table my table has loaded here my table is here already so i can do another uh, interesting demo that just connects this to um, Power BI. But due to my time, I think I will stop here. So thank you so much for joining this session. And I'm sure you're going to watch this video, practice, and then understand the way your data flow really works. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm.